Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on and bless his name, for he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Truly God is worthy to be praised. He's exalted. The King of Kings. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's the living word, the fountain of life. And we joy in his salvation. Glory to God in the highest. We magnify the Lord. We praise his name for he is worthy. Every day of our lives, God is worthy to be praised. He is exalted. He is the fountain of life. He's everything that we need. When we call upon that great name and trust in him, God promises he will never leave us nor forsake us. But he'd be right there in the midst of everything you go through in this life to bring you victorious. God bless you, uh, Desiree. It's so good to know that the Lord is on our side. It doesn't matter what the enemy does or what people say about you, or how they counter you out, how they speak evil of you and come against you. God promises he is with you always, even to the end of the world. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Then he says, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will hold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What a great pleasure it is to know that the Lord is a sustainer of our lives. He keeps us every day. God bless you. He's able to keep us steadfast in the faith every day of our lives when we trust and depend on his word. Doesn't matter what's going on around you. You can stay in a mindset of peace. No matter what's going on, when people are falling away by the wayside, people are giving up in midstream of their troubles and their trials. God bless you, Victor. God bless you, honey. Coming on. God is working in our behalf behind the scenes. Sometimes we don't see it because we're not expecting God when he's working in our lives. We're looking for something grandizing to take place. Sometimes it'd be a little simple thing that God does in our lives. And that could be just giving you peace to deal with situations. Giving you a calm spirit when you want to just give an outburst of rage and anger because things are going on that's beyond your power to overcome. Tonight, we're going to go into a discussion called the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Joyce Myers, one of the greatest television evangelists, she defines fear as false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. And we all know that God is in control of our lives and that the enemy wants to bring us to a place of phobia where we fear everything around us. But God promised to sustain us to keep us secure in his presence, that no matter what's going on in your life, he's right there guiding you, he's comforting you, he's strengthening you, he's empowering you, he's leading you in the path that he's chosen for you because he loves us unconditionally. So let's go into a word of prayer tonight and we're going to get into our lesson. First, first, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So, Father, tonight, as we come before your presence, we thank you that you hear us, God, and you answer us according to your word. When we call in faith, oh God, believing you for changes, healing, and deliverance take place in our lives and the lives of our family members, our friends, other people, God, we come in contact with. When we believe by faith that you're able to turn all things around for the good, we give you glory, God. 
Because sometimes we don't see it with the natural eye, but by faith we know it's already a work in our lives and the lives of others because you've spoken into existence. Lord, tonight we come in faith, believing that the word tonight, Father God, will bring us to a place of clarity and understanding, give us a revelation from the heart of God, from the Logos, that will give us the strength to keep persevering, the power to keep standing, and a heart to keep trusting and depending on you wholeheartedly. No matter what comes in our way, oh God, we're still able to see you in the midst of everything going on in our lives. We bind the spirit of fear and any accusations that people may bring against us, oh God, to bring us down to a place of failure and defeat. We decree and declare that we are victoriously, we're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen to the Lamb of God. God is worthy to be praised. I was reminded of an old song I used to sing back in the 90s at the church I attended, uh, Rhema Worship Center. We used to sing as the praise team, uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And the song, it goes like this, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, for he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the sound mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. So wait on the Lord and be of good courage. So wait on the Lord and be of good courage. For he hath given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. So wait on the Lord and be of good courage. So wait on the Lord and be of good courage, for he hath given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. Amen, amen, amen. I felt that in the spirit, y'all. I had to get that out. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And our lesson tonight is really going to break down a lot of clarity of different things in our lives that creates fear in our lives, brings us to a place of torment and terror. And God wants us to be set free from the spirits. Many people are fearful even of the pandemic as it continues to rise in our country. But God says, as a believer, we are not victimized what everybody else is fearing. We're able to stand on God's word and speak against those things that other people fear in their lives. And we can bring our, our mindsets to a place of victory every day of our lives by trusting and depending on God's word. Amen. So our lesson, some of the categories in our lesson tonight is going to be talking about fears, phobia, which is Isaiah chapter 37, verse 7. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 7. And, and eight, and then Second Timothy chapter one verse seven, Second Timothy chapter one verse seven, nightmares, night terrors, ninety one, Psalms ninety one verse five, Psalms ninety one verse five and six, Isaiah chapter fifty four verse fourteen, Isaiah chapter fifty four verse fourteen, torment and horror, Psalms fifty five verse five. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, Psalm 55, verse 5, and 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, heart attacks, Psalm 55, verse 4, heart attacks, Luke chapter 21, verse 26, St. John chapter 14, verse 1 and 27. These are some of the scriptures we're going to talk about, and then fear of man, Proverbs 29, chapter verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8, verse 17 through 19. Psalm 29, I mean, Proverbs 29, verse 25. Proverbs 29, chapter verse 25. And then Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8, 17 through 19. Ezekiel chapter 2, 
6 and 7, in chapter 3, verse 9, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, in chapter 3, verse 9, the fear of death, Psalms 55, verse 4, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, anxiety, stress, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, uh, chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, lack of trust and doubt, Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, lack of trust and doubt, Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, and Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. The roots of the flesh are the uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 26. It's been in every, every chapter of this book we have been discussing concerning different types of strongholds and, and bondages and enemy uses to hold us in prison. It's always been coming from the roots of the flesh. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruits you shall know them. The way you can define and know a person who's walking in fear is watch how they live. Watch what they say. Watch what's going on in their lives. And I guarantee the Holy Spirit inside of you will begin to reveal to you the heart of an individual who's fearing. The heart of an individual who's fearing. According to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 has been our key verse in the end of each chapter, binding and loosing. So we got to get to the place where we recognize what these attributes and characteristics are that the enemy uses against us to bring us to a place of imprisonment and fear. And when, he, when we recognize those things, we are to do as the word says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, cast down every imagination and every high thought that is all itself against the knowledge of God. So go to 1 Timothy, I mean, yeah, first, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, the spirit, Holy Spirit that's inside of you, it gives us the clarity that we are to operate with the spirit of boldness, the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind, understanding, and judgment. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he gave us boldness. He gave us power to overcome fear. He gave us love to, to conquer fear. He gave us a sound mind. That means understanding and sound judgment in your decision making. Fear, the Greek word delia. Fear is a Greek word, delia, means cowardice. Only here is when you find a person don't have courage to overcome anything that they don't seem, seem to have the power to overcome in their own strength, in their own efforts. Power is a word that's defined in the Greek as dunamis. Inherit power, power to reproduce itself, implying need of constant activity and use for continual reproduction. So we got to keep reproducing the power that God placed inside of us by walking according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit and staying in the word of God and allowing the word of God to manifest in your life on a daily basis as you continually keep feeding on the word of God. God bless you, Cortez. God gives you the ability to overcome through his word anything the enemy brings against you that may create the mindset of a phobia or bondage to fear. From, the, from this word, we get the English dynamo and dynamics, the branch of mechanics dealing with the principles of motions or active operation. Just as dynamo needs to be in motion to produce, to produce power, so one needs to stir up into flame the gift of God in his life. So you got to keep reproducing the gift and the talents God placed inside of you through the power of the Holy Spirit. That dunamis power also is another word for dynamite. That's where we get our word dynamite from. Explosion. There needs to be a spiritual explosion in your spirit as you walk in the truth of God's word that you can assault and overcome the strategies and the plans and the tactics of the enemy. Love. The Greek word is agape, God, the God kind of love. 
That's what God wants you to operate in every day of your life. The God kind of love, not the filial love, which is that brotherly love or that conditional love, the eros, you know, that's, that's a, a aromatic love. You know, God doesn't want to just operate in those types of love, but he wants to have the greatest love ever, the God kind of love. And when you have the God kind of love, you can overcome anything the enemy dishes out at you because God is on your side leading you into victory. So I want to read my devotion for the day. Excuse me. Read my devotion for the day. It says, Oh, Father God, when I'm in your presence, I don't want to leave. I could stay here night and day, never leaving you. I feel strong. I feel powerful. I have peace, I have joy, and I have and I feel love. It's a beautiful place to be in your presence, just trusting you, God. Today I just rest in you, Lord. I release all torment and burdens. I rejoice in you, Father. I have no worries of work, family, health, or my finances. I lay them all down on the altar. I give it all to you, God. All you do. Father is perfect. Isn't that something? All God does is perfect. Only you can do anything and all things perfectly. As I boat, as my boat is shaken in the storm, I rest in you. Thank you, Lord God, for giving me the opportunity to truly know you. I trust in you, Lord, leaning on to more of you, God. That is a very great devotional to remind you that we are strong, we are powerful, we have peace, we have joy, and we have the love of God. So no matter when your storm comes in your life and you feel like your boat is shaking, about to be torn apart because of the winds and the sea is vehemently beating against you, we still can rest in the Lord because he is our victorious Savior. He's working in our lives constantly to bring us to a place of victory. That is great news. That is excellent news to know that God is on your side. Two kinds of fear. There are actually two different kinds of fear, positive and negative. Positive fear is a natural sort of protection that keeps us from hurting ourselves. We don't stick our hands in a blazing fire because we know it will do permanent damage to our bodies. We could characterize this fear as more as a deep respect. I respect fire or electricity, so I obey their laws. The same principle applies to God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalms 111, verse 10. Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I obey God's commandments because I respect him for who he is. That is excellent news. When you get a revelation of your relationship with God, you're going to respect God for who he is in your life. God bless you, son. You're going to respect God because God is the one who's in control of everything in your life. Even when the enemy tries to tempt you to fall into the fiery temptations and the tests in your life to distract you, to distort you, to break you down to when you're in a place of despair and misery. God says, when you obey my commandments, guess what happens? I show up on the scene every time the enemy thinks he's about to trick you up and cause you to fall. God says, I got you. That is excellent news that God is on your side. As I was studying this today, I got a revelation about fear. My revelation God gave me today, he says, fear is defined as, a, as failure, evil, arrest, restraints. Failure, evil, arrest, and restraints. Failure because we get defeated in our mindsets. Defeat takes place in the mind before it actually manifests in your life. When you get to the place in your mindset where you give up on your dreams, you give up on the purpose, you give up on the plan, you give up on the vision God has for you, then you find yourself operating in the mindset of defeat. Then evil, negative, angry, just miserable. Why? Because all you begin to pronounce, pronounce out of your mouth is negativity, nothing positive. Just You speak failure. You speak defeat. You speak regression. All these different things are the characteristics of the human nature 
but we don't have to give in to those powers of those things because we're standing on God's word and God's word begins to operate in our lives to bring us a place where we overcome those thoughts. If we don't overcome the thoughts the enemy plants in your mind as a seed, those things begin to sprout, become a tree in your life. And you find yourself operating in the in the in the in the playground of the enemy's play den, play pen, because he got all the things, the tools that he needs to keep you entrapped in his bondage. And then arrest. The enemy brings to a place of arrest because he wants to stop you from receiving what God sees about you, even confessing what God says about you. So he arrests you. He'll harass you. He'll arrest you. Then not only that. Then he restrains you. The enemy will restrain you in, in a place of bondage where now you're entrapped and you can't seem to get out. Because he brings you to a place of captivity, which is your arrest of captivity, where you can't see yourself getting out of situations, circumstances, things that have happened in your life from your childhood, things that hurt you as you begin to grow up in your young adult, adult life, things that wounded you and scarred you. The enemy wants you to stay in the mindset of, of reminding yourself of the failures and defeats and the things that held you in bondage till you can't get out of it. So he wants you to see yourself not holding on to the promises of God's word. He wants you to see yourself in a place where you, you're in captivity, just like the children of Israel in the Bible, over and over, they were being set free from bondage, but because their hearts were prone to do evil, they went right back into bondage. We do the same thing today. We have the same method, but different formats. The same method, but different formats, because it all originates from the mindset. We all think the same way and we do different things to get ourselves in a place of imprisonment, our self-imprisonment. Hear what I just said? We become our self-imprisonment to where when God is trying to set you free to show you, hey, there's a better way for your life. There's a better place of promises for you, but all you got to do is trust me. So we don't find ourselves trusting God. We begin to trust in our, in our fear. We trust in the negative things. Instead of the positive things that God wants to show you. So the negative things overpower the positive in your life. And before you know it, you're entrapped. So we don't respect God. We don't honor God. We don't observe God. We neglect God and we rebel against God and we turn from God. If an individual does not understand what is going on, a natural Positive fear can escalate to the point that the spirit of fear takes over. If you don't understand that the underlying factor is the enemy in the thing that's causing you to fear, the enemy brings you to a place where now it overpowers you. It overtakes you. Many people fear leaving their homes. They fear driving their cars down the street because all this reckless driving these young people are doing today. So we allow these different things to resonate in our heart and it begins to manifest in our mindset so you fear of getting sick. And this is something God spoke to me earlier. He said, many people, they fear of, of things that their mama or their daddy or their ancestors got sick with and it took them out of this world. So you allow those things to get into your mindset, which causes a phobia, where now you're bound into the same mindset of the things that held you, held them in captivity. So now it, it went from their generation to your generation, and now you're entrapped by the same phobia, the things that caused them to die in their fear. You die in your fear. You catch what I just said? You die in your fear. For example, an accident or a great tragedy can be the trigger that caused positive fear to balloon into a negative fear. Inspired and magnified by the strong man called fear. We all have a strong man in our lives. And one of those strong men that will overpower you, overtake you, will imprison you, is the spirit of fear. We know that a spirit of fear is a work when our spiritual vitality, when our spiritual vitality is affected. That means your spiritual strength, your spiritual drive to keep moving forward is affected. Negative fear chokes out faith, joy, peace, and love. Negative fear chokes out faith, joy, peace, and love. It binds, it paralyzes, it weakens a Christian, and it softens him up for the arrival of other spirits. 
negative fear opens up the gateway for other spirits to come into your life to imprison you with many other places of bondage. The reason why many people find themselves in prison or entrapped by the enemy is because when those thoughts enter into your, your mind from your eye gate, from your ear gate, the things that people speak, the things you see on television, the things you see in your society, many things will produce the seed of fear on the inside of you, which will cause you to begin to get afraid and you run in terror and hide. So once I'm afraid, I remember growing up, I was afraid of dogs. Because my dad had this one vicious German shepherd. That dog was so mean. It was me and a junkyard dog. That dog was so mean. You couldn't even get near him to feed him without him trying to kill you. And so I, my dad used to make me go out there to feed the dog. And I hated to feed the dog. So I had to trick the dog, make the dog run into another area so I could throw the food in his dish and run away. So this dog was so mean. If he could have got me, he would have ripped me to shreds. And that's how mean people are. There are many Christians in the same type of mindset. They are fearful of themselves. And the enemy will make you fear of yourself. You fear the way you look. You fear what people think about you. You fear what, what they said about you. You fear so many different things to where you even fear yourself. And so when you fear yourself, now you think, I ain't going to never be nothing. I'm not going to mount anything. It can be worse that someone spoke of you, your parents spoke of you, or if somebody else spoke over you, and they said, hey, you, you, you're you nothing. You're ugly. You, you're nothing but miserable. You're bitter. And, and all these negative things they saw in your life begin to manifest with the negative fear, and so that negative fear is beginning to overpower your thoughts. So when it overpowers your thoughts, now all of a sudden, anytime you try to progress, you find yourself regressing. God bless you, Tawanda. Good to see you on here tonight. So we find us a regressing. And we regress back into a place of our comfort zone. And when we get to that comfort place, then the enemy knows, hey, I got you in prison. So now I know you ain't going to never do anything God wants you to do. I'm afraid to stand in front of people and speak what God tells me to speak. I'm afraid to operate in the gift and the talent God given me because I, I, I'm, I'm afraid what people might think about me, what they might say about me. I don't think I sound good singing, so I'm afraid to sing. It's like we allow so many different people to dictate to us what we can and cannot do. And that's a shame. We allow other people to dictate to you who you are. When we need to believe for ourselves who we are. Because the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made through God. If God fearfully and wonderfully made you, guess what he did? He displayed his glory through your life. So the enemy wants you to think that, hey, I'm naked. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking good. Anything I wear don't fit me right. I ain't going to never be anything in life. So I'm going to go down this pathway of gloom and doom and failure. So God's word tells us God is not given the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So if God gave you a sound mind, then why are we allowing ourselves to be in a chaotic mind or a tormented mind? And the many reasons is because we don't believe in God we, like we claim we do. And you say you trust God. You say you're standing on his word then what is the problem? Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. When Moses died, God told Joshua, he said, Joshua, now it's for you to take the mantle and lead my people to the promised land. So God gave him a stern instruction. Dry your eyes, stop crying, now get up, rise in authority that I've given you, be strong and of good courage. So it says, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. That sounds like an assurance policy. If God promises, if I gave you a command to do something, I give you the provision to do it. God bless you. God says, I give you the, 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 the stern authority. I place it in your hand. I gave you the instructions. I gave you divine order. 
I told you exactly what you can and cannot do. Now God says, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. So if God said, do not be afraid, doesn't that mean that God is backing you up? Doesn't it mean that God is on your side? Doesn't it mean that when fear tries to come upon you, God's going to block it? If God says, don't be afraid, you can guarantee that God is going to stop the fear from overpowering you through his word. And he said, the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So if God promises to be with you wherever you go, it's a guarantee. He's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to cover you. He's going to keep you stern and secure in his will. In reality, negative fear is the negative faith of the devil. Negative fear is the negative faith of the devil. We believe what the devil says more than God's word when we allow fear to reign in our lives. Fear is directly the opposite and it opposed to God's law. For this reason, the fearful and unbelieving shall have their part in the lake of the burning fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. So if you're operating and walking in fear, God says you won't even enter the kingdom of heaven. Because if you're fearful, that means you're unbelieving. And if you're unbelieving, he says you're going to have your part in the lake of fire. In the end, when Christ returned for the believers, he said the unbelievers will see the second death in, in hell. And that's a sad place to be in your mind. We allow your mind to victimize you. To when you turn yourself from trusting and dependently wholeheartedly on God's word and following after his laws and decrees and allowing God to guide you till you begin to lead and guide yourself down a pathway that leads to destruction. Jesus pinpointed the disciples' fear while they were battling. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, said what they were afraid of, they thought they were going to drown. Remember they was in the boat and Jesus was in the boat sleep? And, and Jesus had to confront the disciples because they thought they was going to drown. He said they didn't comprehend that Jesus was who had control over the death. He is life. Isn't it strange that the very thing that most people fear the most is death, is what will eventually receive, what they will receive because of the fear? You will re receive, if you're fearing death, you're going to receive death in the end because that's what you've been expecting. Fear brings you to a place of expectation, uh, expecting doom and gloom. It brings you to a place of expecting something bad to happen to you. And that's what the enemy does, plays on your psyche to where he make you think that all the stuff you're thinking about that's not of God has to happen to you. But God says in his word that he gave us authority, Luke 10, 19, to tread on serpents and over scorpions, over all the powers of the enemy. So if he gave you the power and the authority Stop letting fear dominate your mind. The first appearance of fear was in the Garden of Eden. When they heard the voice of the Lord in the garden, they were afraid. Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. When Adam and Eve sinned against God by eating of the tree, God told them not to eat of the good and evil, the tree of knowledge. That's when their eyes became open to sin and they were fearful of the indignation of God because of their disobedience. We do the same thing today. We fear God because we make mistakes. We fall short of God's glory. We keep doing things God commanded us not to do. So when we when th things happen to us, we, we say, okay, God don't love me. God don't care about me. If God cared about me, how can we let my, my loved one die in this pandemic? If God really loves me, how come God allowed me to lose my job? If God really loved me, how come God allowed this, allowed that to happen to me? Now fear settles in your heart. Well, I'm not going to trust God. I'm not going to trust nobody. I'm not even going to leave my house. I'm going to put myself in this place of, 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 of prison, imprisonment in my house. Because if I go out of the house, people keep getting corona. So you fear the disease that everyone else is fearing. When God said in his word, you have the power to overcome it. I'm going to tell you something. Ever since this pandemic started in March of last year, I have not feared it one time. I have not got sick one time. Why? Because I confess what God says about me. He sent this word to heal me and deliver me from all destruction. If God sent his word 
then we got to stand on God's word. God backs his word up. His word becomes your security blanket. His word covers you. His word shields you from everything else the enemy think is going to take you out of this life. God said, no, because I, I paid the price through Jesus Christ on the cross. Therefore, by my power and my authority, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of God. That's powerful. That is really powerful to know that God is on your side. So just because everybody else is fearing, the Lord spoke to me. He said, get you some emergency, get some black seed oil, take some alive multivitamin, take some coconut oil, take some olive oil. He said, take these things on a daily basis, and I guarantee you won't get sick. Guess what happened? I have not got sick, not one time. Because my faith is in what God has instructed me to do. God gives a sound instruction, but do we follow his instructions? We allow everybody else to dictate to us what we can and cannot do for our own health. You need to get this vaccine because everybody taking the vaccine, you better do this, you better do that. I'm going to tell you now, the devil is a liar. If God doesn't move by his spirit in your heart to tell you to take this vaccine, don't take it. I guarantee the greatest vaccine you can have today to conquer anything in this world is the word of God. Standing on God's word will cover you and provide for you and protect you from everything else everybody is fearing. John says it like this in 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. He said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If you fear, you have not been perfected in love. If you fear, your, your, your fear is casting out love. That God has placed in your heart. When Adam and Eve had perfect love before they sinned, there was no fear of animals, elements, or even God himself. They had perfect love. But because of the sin, the sin will open your eyes up to rebellion. The sin will open your eyes up to resistance. The sin will open your eyes up to opposing God's word. When God gives you a stern word, Either you're going to obey God's word. Jesus puts it this way. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Are we going to keep God's commandments today by obeying his word? Are we going to run in terror and fear? I don't know about you, but I choose to follow after God's word. God's word will overpower the thoughts of the enemy every single time. Because Jesus Christ has conquered all of our foes and he gave us the victory. Then he says, in First John, I mean Saint John, chapter fifteen, verse seven: If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So, if Jesus gave us a command, if you stay connected to the power source, which is the Word of God, which is Himself, and abide, that means to take residence. To stay connected. He said, ye shall ask what ye will. So whatever it is your desire is and is lining with God's word, he said you can ask whatever you will. And it will be done for you. Because he is the answer to all of our problems and every situation that arises in our lives. Because the word of God trumps the enemy anytime. Anytime God speak a word in your life, I guarantee his word will surely come to pass in your life. But it's up to you to believe that word and stand on a word. The child of God who obeys God's word should never permit fear to take him as a prisoner. The child of God who obeys God's word should never, ever allow the enemy to take you as a prisoner to fear, especially when he is aware of the fact that fear is not from God. That is a profound statement. As a child of God, a born again believer, you should not allow yourself to be victimized, held in captivity, brought, it, brought into a place of bondage by the enemy as a prisoner to fear. Because we know what God says, fear is not from God. For God has not given the spirit of fear, 
That means that you and I can refuse it in the name of Jesus because whatever is not from God is, is not for us. Whatever is not from God is not for us. The phrase fear not is mentioned in form or another 365 times in the Bible. One time for every day of the year. We do not have to put up with fear or even, even for one day. Fear in the Bible, mentioned 365 times, means we don't even have to give in to fear, not one day of our lives. Symptoms. Some of the major areas are under control of the spirit of fear are phobia, nightmares, sickness, death, worry, excessive, excessive timidity, stress, psychological complexes, and heart, heart attacks. These are some of the characteristics of fear of the enemy that brings you to a place of bondage. Heart attacks. Scientists have discovered that highly emotional events, both good and bad, can upset the heart rhythm to the point that a sudden cardiac failure takes place. Isn't that something? How you can bring fear just by thinking about it so much to cause your heart to stop beating or change the rhythm of your heart to your begin heart, heart begin to palpitate even faster because of fear? Jesus prophesied that this, this would be the sign of the end time. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of heaven shall be shaken. Luke chapter 21 verse 26. Your heart will fail you because of fear. You allow yourself to have a heart attack because of fear. And sometimes fear, it, it, it happens in our hearts, cause our hearts to break down because we allow us to fear things that's not in our power to change. If you don't have control of every circumstance in your life, then why are you fearing it when God is in control? Think about it. Then the story is a story in the book. It says we had a man in one of the Costa Rica, Costa Ricans uh, crusades so dominated by fear that he had been a virtual prison in his own room for three years. God delivered him from the spirit of fear and he resumed a normal life. The case of Job is used to show that, so that a God will for some Christians to suffer sickness, loss of children, and untold agony. God will permit these things to happen to you. But according to Job's own word, the problem that initiated the whole episode of fear for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of is come, uh, come unto me. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job opened the door to satanic oppression by fearing the loss of children, wealth, and health. He said the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. So what is, is it that you are fearing tonight? What is it that, that bothers you the most in your heart? And that thing is what you need to pray against. That thing you need to bind and loose in the name of Jesus. Bind it back to the pit of hell and loose the power of God to break it from your life for eternity. When Satan asked for the opportunity to come against Job, he had the legal right to enter into Job's life. The open door of fear and he took advantage of it with vengeance. The enemy goes to God. The Bible says he's accused of brother. So he goes to God looking for an opportunity to take advantage of you. And when he gets that opportunity or the permission from God to test you, he comes in with power and authority and a vengeance to stir up things in your life to destroy you. Satan had been able to touch him he hadn't been able to touch him because God had a hedge around him. But as soon as God removed that hedge, what happened? The enemy attacked him every area of his life. Every area of his life, he attacked it. Why? Because he think, the thing he feared the most, what bothered his heart the most, now has come upon him. The thing you fear the most is the thing that would dominate your thought life. It would dominate your thought life to where it begins to break you down and make you sick and miserable. Good things come from God. People say this classic example of the battle between good and evil and Job happened to be an unfortunate pawn God used. But it's not the characteristic of the just, loving, merciful God we serve. 
He does not casually throw us to the wolves just as to prove some point, nor does he reward good people by giving them evil things. On the contrary, James chapter 1 verse 17, it says, Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, God is not going to allow things to happen to you without having a plan. God has a plan. Evil comes to your life, God can produce good out of it. He says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. So anything that happens to you that throws you for a loop, begin to examine what it is, begin to seek the face of God and call upon the name of the Lord and decree his word over your situation and bind that thing and loose the word of God and loose the Holy Spirit to destroy those things in your life and give you the strength and ability to keep pressing forward. It says, if, the, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? And that's Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. So if God says, even the heathen, the unrighteous, know how to give good gifts to their children, how much greater the love of God is towards us to give us good things. For we have a better covenant with better promises. We have better hope that God doesn't treat us like all, all like he supposedly, like he supposedly treated Job. Because then he would have to do the same thing over to overcome believers. So in other words, the way God allowed Job to be treated, we need to pray God don't let these things happen to us. And God promises there's no good thing when he was whole from us who walk right before him. God knows what you need, when you need it, and how to provide for you. It is certainly, we would not, not be worthwhile for us if God allows us to be conquered by an enemy. It is no good if God allows an enemy to overpower you. But my Bible tells me that Jesus defeated the enemy when he rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, he brought us triumphant grace the victory to overcome anything the enemy throws our way. But we got to believe it by faith, stand on God's word and shut the door. The enemy open up in your life. Here's another point. When Job finally got this thing sorted out, the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Everything that Job was going through was to draw his attention and his focus to keep trusting and dependent on God who was in control of his life. In other words, God released him from his captivity and from the spirit of fear. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. After this, Job lived 140 years. And this is in Job chapter 42, verse 10, verse 12, and verse 16. Job chapter 42, verse 10, verse 12, and verse 16. So we got to keep on believing that we shall overcome anything the enemy brings our way through the power of the Holy Spirit because we're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The devil never had again an open door into Job's life to, with fear after that time he tested him. My personal battle with fear took place while we were a missionary in Nicaragua. I can trace it back to a lack of trust in God and failure to read his word as I should have done. We were living in Managua just prior to the earthquake and the wars that, ha that had happened in that place. Our home was located in the area outside of Managua where there had been numbers of robberies with people being held at gunpoint or knife point. The thieves would hold the people captive for hours while they sacked their houses. They didn't care so much about our household things as much as I worried about the safety of our two children and myself. Jerry had been gone every night to preach the crusade in the city. Many times I would stay home alone with the children until wee hours of the morning without a telephone or a car. Sometimes the electricity would go out and we would be without lights until the late into the midnight hour. For someone fresh from the United States, it was devastating. Isn't that amazing? Because this woman was talking about her husband being an evangelist without 
uh, 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 preaching the gospel constantly in, in crusades. He, he would leave them at home alone. But in the era where they lived, people were fearing the robberies and, and, and people breaking their homes, taking them captive and, and stealing their things and holding them uh, for hours in a place of captivity in their own homes. And it's something how the enemy does that to us today. He wants to produce us to a place where everything happened around you, you feel it's going to happen to me too. So I allow this fear to get into my mind and, that, and it, it takes over me. The more I allow fear to prey on my mind, the worse things got. I open the door into the spirit of fear. So I, so I have doubted and doubled my efforts to read the word of God. And then instead I slacked off. So what happened here, she was telling the story how she was studying God's word, but then all of a sudden all this fear took place. She began to fall away from God's word and, and, and wouldn't read as much. But later on, the story defines how this woman who was once victimized by fear, all of a sudden she began to hear the voice of God, began to read God's word again, and began to get deeper and deeper into the spirit to what God gave her peace to overcome the spirit of torment and brought healing and deliverance in her mind and her family. We don't have to be held captive by this bondage of the enemy anymore because we're overcomers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Nightmares. We can be free from the fear even while we sleep. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day. Psalm 91 verse 5. Psalm 91 verse 5. So even in your sleep, God promises to protect you, to cover you, to guard you, to guide you through his word. And all you got to do is keep depending on God's word, resting in God's work and the finished work of the cross and knowing that God has defeated even while you sleep the enemy that trying to attack you. Isn't that something? A lot of times we, we feed on these fearful things by watching movies that produce nightmares. We watch television programs, you know, all these different things, witchcraft, sorcery, which produce nothing but bondage in your mind to fear. And when you allow that gateway to open up, then you wonder why, why these things, I'm, I'm hearing things in my house. I'm, I'm seeing things not there. Why? Because I, I opened the gateway up to these things, so now they control me. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to think that you're powerless. So when you open a gateway to those things and then you get into a place of torment, you need to check yourself. Get back to the place when you re-examine what was I did that introduced this spirit to come upon me to cause me to be tormented. When I lie down, I'm fearing somebody's going to break in my house. When I lie down, I'm fearing somebody's going to uh, uh, rob me. When I, when I go to sleep, my mind is beginning to play these records of the things I, I just watched on television so now I'm, I'm fearing that somebody's going to kill me in my sleep. Why? Because you open the gateway. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. We defeat the enemy. The thoughts that the enemy put there that you allow yourself to, to open up the gateway for, you need to close the door. And the only way to close the door is to dwell as Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Think on the things that are good, the things that are lovely, the things that have a good report, the things that are just Begin to think on the things that magnify and glorify God to change those thoughts that were once filthy thoughts into a, 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 a mindset of thoughts that produce life and peace and abundance on God's thoughts inside of you. So we have to allow ourselves to recognize what is it that I open my mindset open to, to come into my life, to infiltrate my structure and seal the breach. You got to seal the breach because the breaches are the doors or the gateway that you open up to the enemy to come into your mind and come into your heart to destroy you. And the enemy will do just what he wants to do because you open the door for him to come in. So when he comes in, why you think it's strange now he didn't came into your life to attack you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, 27, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, said, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. You got to close the door. 
You got to even guard the words that come out of your mouth. You got to close the door. Even the things you allow to resonate in your heart to manifest in your life, you got to close the door. You got to seal the breach that the enemy cannot come in and out as he chooses into your life. Because if you don't close the door, the enemy feels like he has the right because you gave him leeway to come in. But you got to seal the breach, close the door, shut them down once and for all, and allow the Holy Spirit to put a guard around your life, around your mindset, around your attitude, around your character, around the words that come out of your mouth. Allow the Holy Spirit to put inside of you the God kind of nature, the God kind of lifestyle that will manifest through your life every day of your life. God bless you, everyone. I thank you for joining tonight. But I want to encourage you tonight. We're going to continue this on next week. Stay in the word of God. The more you stay in the word of God, the more power will begin to be reproduced in your life. That dunamis power, that explosive power to rip the enemies of shreds in your life and in your family and your children and people you come in contact with that may be negative coming at you. Because you're going to have people come against you with fearful and negative mindsets and going to try to infiltrate those things into your life to stop you in your track. But you have the power to overcome through the word of God. But you got to be willing to say, okay, God, I did things my way. I walked my own way. I thought my own thoughts. Now I give my mind, my body, my soul, my will to you, God, because I want to love you with all my soul, my mind, my heart, and my strength. And I guarantee when you do that, God will come in. He will sit on the throne of your heart. He will command and guide and instruct and counsel you in the right way to go all the days of your life. So it's up to you to make the choice. You might be on tonight. Don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we can be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can have everlasting night, life tonight by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and to wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And now, Lord, I thank you for saving me. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit, and that with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoices over one sinner that's come to the Lord. And if you're a backslider and you know you have walked with the Lord and somewhere down the road you slipped off the track and you made mistakes and you stopped serving God, you got mad at God, I want you to repeat this prayer after me tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my backsliding ways. Your word says that you are married to the backslider. Now come into my heart, O oh God, and forgive me for my sins, knowingly, unknowingly, restore me, revive me, refresh me, replenish me with your spirit, that I can be a witness for you, and allow the anointing to destroy every yoke and remove every burden in my life, and empower me to be that witness that you call me to be for such a time as this, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God, and I guarantee that the Lord is on your side. He's rooting for you to come back to him as a child of God, to give your heart to him, knowing that without him, you can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible because we believe in the promise work of what Christ has done on the cross for us. It's your time. It's your season. It's an opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and to empower you and to change your thinking. Then you begin to think on the things that are lovely, the things that are just, the things that are pure, the things that are of a good report. And now the Holy Spirit to wash you clean by the power of the word of God. If you'd like to sow a seed into this ministry, feel free to do so via Cash App 
uh, uh, which is I'm gonna post this on here in just a second. Cause I, um, if you feel like God is moving to your heart to sow a seed, feel free to do so. And I guarantee God is gonna bless you even more because of the obedience. It's about God, it's not about me. It's about being obedient to what God wants to do in your life because your seed will open up the gateway for God to release greater promises in your life. And it's up to you to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and to fill you with this precious Holy Spirit. And I guarantee when you do that, God will come into you and empower you with such power and authority to set you free from anything the enemy brings at you. Not only that, it'll open the gateway for God to really reign in your life. The promises he has for you. And it's up to you to walk in obedience to God's word and believe that hope against hope. And I guarantee God will do what he promised to do. You might have a, a, a vision for a business or whatever it is God has instructed you to do in this season, this new year. This is a new season of expectancy. This is a new season of moving forward in the promises God has for your life. And I believe that somebody this year is going to see greater promises coming to their lives. Somebody's going to see greater visions opening up the avenues of what God has spoken to you to do. And God going to show you favor where your business is going to expand this year. Because of the pandemic, God says those things are not going to stop God from moving in your life. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And I guarantee as you believe and trust in God's word, Whatever it is God has instructed you to do in this season, walk by faith and watch God do it in your life. Write your vision. Make it plain that all who may see it may run with it. That's what the word tells us. So whatever it is you got that God told you to do in this season, write it down. Share that vision. And I guarantee when you share your vision, the favor of the Lord is released upon your life and the heavens begin to open up and begin to rain upon you the resources that you need to make those things come to pass in your life. I see it happen all the time in the lives of others. God, give me a word to speak. I speak and it happens because I'm a man of faith. I believe that every word I speak over people's lives will surely come to pass in their life by faith. And I have many people have come back to me even years later and said, man of God, you spoke a prophetic word over me back during that time. And now that word is manifest in my life. And I want to thank you. I even had people so into my life because of, of the manifestation of what God has done in their lives. So you be encouraged tonight, my brother, my sister. Keep standing on God's word. Read 2 Timothy chapter 1. And get a lot of that word to manifest in your heart and take residence in your heart. And I guarantee God will speak to you by divine interpretation through the power of the Holy Spirit and give you insight and revelation to become a more and a fruitful and abundant child of God to walk free from fear and to walk more powerfully in faith. God bless you tonight, Father. We thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you, Lord God, for this word that gone forth over the airways. We bind every demonic force, every negative foul spirit that was trying to come against this word from manifesting. We cast it down at the feet of Jesus. We decree and declare, God, that the promises you have for our lives are yes and amen, that we are living in the overflow. We're living in the abundance of your grace, oh God. Everything that we need, Father God, you're supplying by faith. It's already done because you're a God that called those things that be not as though they already were. We speak healing over those who need healing tonight, God. We speak deliverance over those that are bound with any type of stronghold, any type of bondage. And I decree and declare, oh God, their minds are being liberated. After hearing this word tonight, God, our minds and our hearts are being liberated by the power of the Holy Spirit to be free from fear and bondage of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you again. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I saw some new people on tonight. I want to thank you again, uh, Sister Evelyn. I want to thank you again, Desiree, for coming on tonight again. And God bless you all. Even my brother Mike, God bless you, brother, and condolences to your family as well. And I, I really believe that God is doing some great things in this season. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying these lessons. I'm really enjoying these lessons because I, I, God is speaking to me first. And as he speaks to me, I share with you and I pray that this word really helps you 
as a child of God in your Christian walk with the Lord to me, be more powerful and more free from the strongholds and the snares and attacks of the enemy. Father, cover their minds and cover their hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Until next week, Tuesday, the Lord says the same. We'll be back on again to finish this lesson on the spirit of fear. And I, I pray that you're learning something and, and that you take the time out to hear what God wants you to hear and to walk in obedience to his word. And I know that the Lord himself will show up in your situations and show you that you are greater than anything that comes against you because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift his count upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.